and right. Uh, if you look at the first three terms there, what are we doing each time? What's our generator? Adding three. Adding three. And those of you that didn't, if you just wrote down three, please, please realize that's not a complete answer because you could, for example, be multiplying by three each time, right? So you need to be really clear the generator is uh, adding three. Okay, now that I've got it in my mind, it's kind of weird that I, that's question B. Now that I've got it in my mind what the generator is, add three each time, I can pretty quickly say, well, my next term would be a 12. That's adding three, followed by 15, followed by 18, followed by 21. So that's adding three. That's my generator. What kind of sequence is this? That's right. You should have written down arithmetic. And the reason why it's arithmetic? Because it's adding the same number each time. Yeah, we have a common difference, right? We're adding the same value. Um, now, down below it said, on a separate, and it's this right here in front of you, create multiple representation of the sequence table and graph. Uh, pretty straightforward. Um, I'll just put down here, this is the um, sequence, this is the value of n, and this is the value of t of n. Um, and the sequence that I had, I was, I was given the 3, 6, and then the 9. So I've got value 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And uh, when I plug in um, the, the 1 up above they had listed, I would get a 3, a 6, a 9. And then I'm just adding the 3, 12, 15. Um, 18 and then 21 would be the seventh value. And plotting those points, I'm not going to bother to do that right now because um, I think you guys can do it. Be very clear though, when you're if, if you're asked to do a problem like this, what is the scale of your graph? Uh, if you just have dots on there and you don't give me a sense of the scale of it, that's a problem. Now, do you have to write down every number? No, you could start with a zero and then just go one, two, three, four, and then write down this is the fifth one. One, two, three, four. That's the 10th one, one, two, three, four. This is the 15th one. So real quickly, I get a sense of um, how many each one of those lines is worth. Each line is worth one if it takes five to get to five. And then the same thing going up, one, two, three, four, and a five. One, two, three, but one, two, three, four, and then this is the 10. Um, and then some of those numbers go back. Some of those numbers, um, they get a little bit bigger on the other thing. but it doesn't take a lot to uh, plot these. So at 1, I would plot the number 3. At 2, I would plot the number 6. Now, answer this question for me. Should I be connecting these dots or not? And, and why wouldn't I connect these dots? Can someone offer a reason why? Why are these not connected? Because quite a few of you did connect and most of you didn't. Why wouldn't I connect these? Well, for example, we're talking about um, we're talking about a sequence, right? And we understand that the domain of sequences are those counting numbers. So because it's a sequence of numbers and our domain is restricted to just those natural numbers starting at one, one, two, three, four, five, uh, we wouldn't we wouldn't we definitely would not connect those dots. So you would put more dots up there to complete that. All right, next question. Um, so, I, th I think um, it, it would be good to talk about intuitively what's going on here, right? So, let's say that I have a specific kind of a, it's a, it's a, a, a pink, like, um, bouncy ball that you got at the Dollar Tree, and this thing has the property that if I drop it from a height of 10 feet, it rebounds to 5 feet the next time. And then it rebounds again to about 2.5 each time. So you guys can intuitively tell me right now, what are you multiplying by to get from the original drop height to the rebound height? What are you multiplying by? One half, right? Now, when you're looking at these numbers, they're not going to be that pretty. And your mind is not going to just say, oh, that's a half, right? Your mind's going to say, what the heck is that? So focus on this. What you do is you take the rebound height of 5 and you divide it by the original drop height of 10. Okay, That gives you the rebound ratio. You can write it as either the number 1 half, or if you wanted to, you could write it as 0.5, or if you wanted to, you could write it as 50%. They all say the same thing. 
So for this particular problem, if we're starting at a height of 3,000 centimeters and our rebound height is 2,535, right? Now I'm freed up from worrying about ugly numbers and I can just say, well, look, it's going to be where it rebounds to 2,535 divided by my original drop height of 3,000. And when I do the calculations, you guys know this is about what? Yeah, it's like 84.5%, right? So it's about 0.845, all right? Okay, now that I know that number, um, it says find the rebound height after the third bounce. What I do is I'm going to take the 3,000 and I'm going to multiply it. So I, I could say, let me let me erase this, this thinking space. I'm going to say, hey, if I start at the 3,000, that's my orig original height, it's going to re rebound to 2,535. And if I take the 2,335 and I multiply it by the 0.845 again, it's going to come back up to 2142. And if I multiply it by that again, it's going to come up to 1810. Uh, so if you look at it, this is, this is the initial value, the zeroth value, right? This is my first rebound, second, and third. So the third rebound rebound uh, height should be 1810, 1810 centimeters. Find an equation that could represent the rebound height. Now, this is a recurring theme. This is a problem that I think this is the, uh, an idea that we need the most work with. And if we look at it now throughout the rest of the test, things are going to make sense. Okay, so let's talk about this. What we're talking about here is coming up with the an equation for a geometric sequence. When we looked at this originally in this chapter, we didn't call this a geometric sequence. We just said it's just a bouncing ball and where does it come back to, right? But if you if we're every single time we're multiplying by 0.845, right? That means it's geometric because why it has a common ratio. Each time to get to the next value, we multiply by 0.845. So what does that look like? Well, in general, and go ahead and write this down in, in your notes. If you have a geometric sequence, right, a particular value will be the initial value, all right? So I'll just call this, uh, mm, let me think, I'll call, I'll call this A. So we're going to call this, the, this is the initial value or the original drop height in this, in this setting or the zeroth term. Let's write that, zero, is there an E there? I don't, I don't know, zeroth term. All right, so that's where we start. That would be 3,000 in the setting. So the zeroth term goes first. Times. In parentheses, I'm going to write the common ratio or, or the multiplier, what you're multiplying by each time. I'm going to say I'll use the variable B for this, but this is what I'm multiplying by each time. Multiplier. Every single time I'm multiplying by 0.84. And then I raise that to the nth power. Now, it's weird. I know a little bit that we're talking about multiplying again and again and again by the number 0.845. But think about it, right? Exponentiation allows us to show repeated multiplication. So this is just saying, hey, if you want the nth term, you're going to have to multiply by 0.845 three times. So it's starting out with the 3,000 times a 0.845 times a 0.845 times a 0.845. So this is exactly what we need. This is a recurring, this, this could have got most teams many more points if they knew this. A lot of you tried to do this and it was just, it, it didn't work out. Uh, and this was definitely in the math notes and it's something that a couple of you I even had look at during the test, the study team test. Okay, so for this problem, what is our initial height? So we've got T of N. The rebound height at any particular N, where N is a bounce number, is going to be the initial drop height of 3,000 times our common ratio our B, or, or our rebound ratio of 0.845 raised to the nth power. Now, that's nice because all of a sudden figuring out the 15th bounce is not a matter of making a huge table of numbers, right? You don't need to sit there with your calculator and make times 0.845, times 0.845, times 
Why? Because we have a way to tell our calculator, multiply by 0 0.845 15 times. Just do that for me 15 times and let's be done with this. So if I was going to write this down to answer question D, we would simply say, well, 3,000 times 0.845. And I want the 15th bounce, so I'm going to raise it to the 15th power. And when I evaluate that, it's close to 239 of the centimeters. Okay? Uh, and that's, I, again, knowing this particular um, formula, how do you write the nth term of a geometric sequence would have helped a lot of you.